It was the moment Warren Christopher and the rest of America had been waiting for during the last crucial weeks of the hostage negotiations. Overnight, the Iranians had announced that all disputes had been solved. But it wasn't until the agreement, written in English, French, and Farsi, had been gone over word for word that the American negotiator finally got clearance to initial the document. As third parties to the bargaining, it was the Algerians who held the key. If they approved the documents and the arrangements, Iran would too. Christopher then paused before signing to pay tribute to the Algerian team. You and your colleagues in Iran have performed this uh, heavy responsibility with great impartiality, discretion, and high skill. The American people will always remember uh, this contribution to humanitarian matters by the Algerian people and their leaders. Then Christopher and the Algerian foreign minister initialed the three-part agreement. As Christopher said, it didn't spring the lock on the hostages. It just got the release process underway. The first decree is a decree relating to the setting up of an escrow account. Thanian, Marsumun, Yetalaku, Bitahuil, Muntelekat, El Irania, El Mudaha, Filbank, El Echtiati, El Fidirali, the New York. The first concrete sign that the latest news of a settlement was more than rumor came when two Algerian jets landed an anchor this morning for refueling on their way to Tehran. They were on their way to pick up the 52 American hostages. The closest thing to a clue the Turkish government would give out was that the aircraft were due back over Turkey later in the day. Just about the time the two Algerian jets were landing at Tehran's Marabad airport, the team of Algerian doctors in Tehran were being driven to the secret location where the hostages had been gathered. I know you've been up all night with me, and I appreciate that very much. We have now reached an agreement with Iran, which will result, I believe, in the freedom of our American hostages. The last documents have uh, now been signed in Algiers following the signing of the documents in Iran, which will result in this agreement. We still have a few documents to sign before the money is actually transferred and the hostages are released. 
the essence of the agreement is that following the release of our hostages, then we will unfreeze and transfer to the Iranians a major part of the assets which were frozen by me when the Iranians uh, seized our embassy compound and, and took our hostages. We have also uh, reached a complete agreement on the arbitration procedures between ourselves and Iran with the help of the Algerians, which will resolve the claims that exist between residents of our nation and Iran and vice versa. I particularly want to express my public thanks, as I have already done privately, to the Algerians, to their president, their foreign minister, Ben Yahya, and to the three-man negotiating teams who have done such a superb job in fair and equitable arbitration between ourselves and the officials of Iran. We don't yet know exactly how fast this procedure will, uh, will go. We are prepared to move as rapidly as possible. All the preparations have been completed uh, pending the final uh, documents being signed. I will have more to say uh, to you when our American hostages are actually free. I just learned uh, that the planes have landed in Algiers. Fifty, fifty-two, and I just won't call them hostages. They were prisoners of war. But they are all hale and hearty and are now, and you can imagine their happiness, they're preparing to board the American planes for the last leg of the trip to the East Garden. First, they had to get back to Washington, the freed Americans and their families in a fleet of four planes to Andrews Air Force Base. It was closed to the public, but with quite a crowd of Air Force and State Department people to welcome them. The reunions ranged from the tearful to the downright boisterous. That was consular official Donald Cook on top of his family. And so to the capital itself, a tumultuous welcome in a beribboned city and a Washington version of a New York ticker tape welcome. The convoy of buses followed the route of last week's inaugural parade, but the crowds today were thicker. It was as if this country, divided by its experience of Vietnam, were united again by its experience of Iran. The former hostages, who'd spoken earlier of their astonishment at the welcome they received on the way to West Point, had further cause to be more astonished today. The fanfare sounded for President Reagan, who had met the hostages' families before, but not the former hostages themselves. And this was his tribute to them. I'm told that Sergeant Lopez here put up a sign in his cell, a sign that normally would have been torn down by those guards. But this one was written in Spanish, 
and his guards didn't know that Viva la Roja Blanco y Azul means long live the red, white, and blue.